I've left the windows open because it's quite warm in here and the birds are kicking off. The sun's just gone down. Well, they've stopped now. Now that I've said the birds kicking off, they're not. Next week in Serbia, I will be there. I will be in Serbia from Sunday. Then on the 23rd, the 24th and the 27th, we have seminars in Serbia, in Belgrade, at the Radisson Old Mill Hotel in Belgrade. If you're there or you're near there, you're welcome to come. Please join my Telegram group to get details on the tickets. You'll find the link for the Telegram group in the more information bar below. Um, sorry for asking you to download another bloody app. I don't like it either. The problem is with YouTube and this channel at the moment, as I've said before, really don't want to lose the channel. Um, but I got a bit of trouble for the David Icke interview. Uh, in February of this year and then a bit of trouble for the Sam Backman interview that was basically banned by YouTube and if they said if I discuss that topic again which I won't even say the name of um, then I run the risk of having my account deleted so, that doesn't sound like fun eight years of work 300,000 followers now I'd rather keep this account if possible uh, so please join the telegram group if that interests you so I now have about 15 minutes and what I'm going to do is eventually I'm going to edit this. So it will no longer be about Serbian seminars, it will be about answering questions. But if you are in Serbia or you're in Croatia or Slovenia or Bosnia and uh, you don't mind the drive or the short flight across, I will be in Belgrade next week. Details below on my uh, Telegram group if you click on the more information bar. Does anybody have any questions? If you can make them one sentence long and end in a question mark, Narcissism, CPTSD. What else do we talk about? Codependency is a big issue now. We've got a 30 day challenge that will be done once I get back from Serbia. And um, we'll do a 30 day challenge. And that 30 day challenge, all the videos for which are shot, um, with some scope to add new videos and new directions, depending on what people say on the forum. If you know, the 30 day challenge format, usually what we do is we, is we chat to each other every day. I come and read people's feedback and issues. And if we decide we need to go in a certain direction, we can. So we have a plan, like a basic plan, but we have some flexibility. If you're interested in that, again, join the Telegram group because the the signups for that and the early bird, early bird, don't say bird, the early bird, so properly, the received pronunciation in English, the early bird offers. The early bird offers for that will be only do, done through the Telegram group. So for 24 hours, it'll be on for 50% off and then it'll go up to the normal price. So that Thursday challenge will be on overcoming narcissism and codependency. How do we get on the Thursday day challenge, says TT Racer. Join the Telegram group. It will be in the more information bar below. I'll also post a link and uh, in a comment and pin it so it's the top comment under this video okay is it normal for narcissistic rage for the last two weeks could be it certainly could be okay oops sorry i nearly put you in time out there davy why does getting over the narcissist hurt so much Interestingly enough, premiering tonight is an interview I did with Sam on exactly this, why it can take such a long time and why it can be so painful to overcome a truly narcissistically abusive relationship. Uh, in that interview that's on this channel um, titled, Why Does It Take So Long To Get Over the, Your Narcissistic Ex? Sam outlined the specific mechanics for a functioning narcissistic relationship and without getting too deep into it here because what i'm going to say without the preamble and the explanation that he gives and the questions i ask him to make it understandable for for, for the for the rest of us um you can't you can't think as quickly as sam in essence this is going to sound weird he explains it in the interview the narcissist becomes your mother, be they male or female, be they male or female. Somebody with narcissistic personality disorder never individuated from their mother. They carry their overwhelming mother, their, their subsuming, suffocating, smother mother inside of them. And 
when they get into a relationship with you, there's a bridge built between the two of you that's called the shared fantasy. I learned about this in a private conversation with Sam. The shared fantasy is a concept that Sam took from a psychiatrist called Sander in a paper that Sander posted. In, uh, posted. See how the internet affects your brain. Published in 1989, and Sam took it to understand narcissistic abusive relationships. There's a kind of a matrix. The word matrix literally translates as womb. In order to get into a narcissistic abusive relationship, you kind of have to consent to a folly à deux, pardon my French, folly à deux, craziness of two, psychosis. It's a shared psychosis between you and the person with the personality disorder. So you, if you were in a narcissistic abusive relationship, it's not so much as about love and heartbreak and loss in any romantic sense, it's that you've been driven insane. You have been temp temporarily insane. They become your mother, whether you like it or not, whether you consent to it or not. And then they offer you unconditional love through the umbilical cord, the delusional crazy house hall of mirrors bridge, the shared fantasy that you both enter into, which you enter into in healthy relationships as well. You have a shared fantasy, kind of a shared delusion, shared psychosis, we call it shared fantasy between two people in order for the relationship to move forward which means there's always you, the other person, and then the relationship. And the relationship has its own coordinates. It has its own um, paradigms, as it were. When you lose the relationship, you will experience it as a loss for two reasons, as I understand it. One is you are now orphaned. When you lose the narcissistic, the abusive relationship, you've lost the unconditional love of a mother. This is what we would typically describe as the love bombing and the idealization phase, but it goes a little further than that. The narcissist carries their dead mother inside of them and puts you inside of her. It's pretty dark. It's like horror movie stuff. You are then loved as a child. You are then loved and idealized and loved bombed unconditionally. The narcissist inspires your own latent narcissism, provokes it, and then taps you into your own narcissistic supply. They then feed you like a vampire when they um, acquire a familiar. You'll have seen in different lore, in different films and books, depending on, on who's writing it. A vampire can make someone else a full vampire, or they can make them a half vampire, and there's different ways of doing it. But typically the way this is done is they suck the blood of the victim and they don't suck them to death. Oh, they suck them halfway. Ooh. And then, the vampire cuts themselves and feeds them their blood back to the victim who's at halfway to death and unconsciously just does it, just starts drinking the vampire's blood, which is now infused with their blood. So they form this symbiotic um, pa a parasitical structure between the two of them. Same thing with narcissistic abuse. But when they leave, you are orphaned from that narcissistic supply so you go into narcissistic depletion and you experience the grief and the loss of having lost a mother, of having lost unconditional love and unconditional support. Um, so why does getting over the narcissist hurt so much? You're being put through a grieving phase unwittingly and unconsciously that a child would experience when they lose their mother. So it becomes... Um, I'm sure you've all experienced this at different points in your life where you've actually had a relationship end and you've gone, well, that's that's very sad and I'm still thinking about the person and, and my heart hurts and I miss them, but I'm okay. But this isn't that, this is a real crisis. You actually go into a full blown crisis because you are, you are uh, uh, fiending, you are jonesing, you are like a, a junkie in withdrawal from what they were giving you. It's quite sick. Please watch the video uh, between me and Sam and you will learn more. Excuse me. Not, you know, not a cold, but like a thing. What the hell? What the hell? The Truth of Love asks, is ego death a requirement of narcissistic abuse recovery or is it a consequence of the abuse? Well, 
ego death is one of those rather vague and nebulous terms. I'm not, I wouldn't be too convinced that I would know exactly what, what you meant um, by it. It's a bit like shadow work. People use it in different ways, in, in artfully vague ways to mean different things. Um, strictly speaking, from a psychoanalytic point of view, ego death is a descent into full-blown psychosis. If, you've, if your ego has actually died, you are now very, very mentally sick and you will struggle to live. Um, but people sometimes talk about it like, you know, the Trustafarians who take ayahuasca are like, oh yeah, they experienced an ego death. And they think it's good. And first of all, they have massive swollen egos. So they didn't experience an ego death. Or if they did, their ego died, then came back, took steroids and got even fucking larger. Um, or they just didn't. Very, very few people, you know, this, this term like ego death, what does it mean? What does it mean really? Show me the person with no ego. I'd love to meet them. I've met people with light egos, very, very light egos, um, but ego death, I don't know. And no, I don't, I don't think it's, it's necessary um, as, a, as a part of overcoming narcissistic abuse, unless you're meaning that you rewrite the narrative of who you are. Rewriting the narrative of who you are and what your life is all about and your personal philosophy is necessary for overcoming any majorly traumatic event. It is the only way of overcoming traumatic events in our lives. We have to rewrite the story that we were living of our lives, of what was important to us and of who we are. So that is necessary. Mombi Salty says, it sounds like new age horse hockey. Indeed. John Paul Sartre says, this could get confusing. That's a handle, not John Paul Sartre. This is not a quote from John Paul Sartre. This is a handle. Hegel described non-being in the science of logic. The truth of love says, good answer. Thank you. Onegaishimasu. Last question. I have to go. I'm having difficulty settling on a definite truth after leaving a toxic relationship. Is there a way to minimize the cognitive dissonance? Go over to my Fortress Mental Health Protection System YouTube channel and look up the video on morality. You will never recover from an emotionally abusive relationship, a narcissistically abusive relationship, if you swim in the, in the tepid suit of the moral relative moral relativity that this particular set of cultural coordinates that we're living in now will induce in you. Normal people won't recover. Normies won't get it. You've got a red pill. And that sounds daft and cheap, but it's true. Normal people won't get it. You have to step outside the way normal people think because your TV, your books, your mass media, your marketing, your politics, everything is based on moral relativism. And it's it makes you so vulnerable and it makes it almost impossible to recover. So you need to veer towards moral absolutism. Total moral absolutism is rigidity and death. You don't want that. But if you're trapped in the passivity of moral relativism on a sliding scale, you should lean towards moral absolutism so that you do eventually gather the capacity to say, this is good, this is bad, this is acceptable, this is not acceptable. And I don't care why you did this. I don't care why you are killing innocent people. I don't care why you're attacked. I don't care. It's unacceptable. And many of us can't get there. And that's not a personal fault or codependency or form responding. That's just a really weak culture that's collapsing in on itself that venerates uh, cowardice and moral relativism as a virtue. And it isn't. It isn't virtuous to be self-deprecating codependent and fawning and obedient it's not virtuous so cure yourself of this poison by going over to the fortress mental health protection channel and watching the video on morality i'm sure it will help it is time i now have a tentacle croissant if you're interested in that podcast that i do with pierre xo it's going live immediately ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your time and for your attention perhaps i will see some of you in serbia cheers <laughs>